Revenue Chat Episode 82. Get in on the biggest thing in energy and earn additional income. Create financial freedom for decades to come. Learn more at TonyDierso.com slash P-O-W-U-R. That's TonyDierso.com slash P-O-W-U-R. Hey, make good income with Rain Soul, S-O-U-L. It's a delicious seed-based, two-ounce blend packed with antioxidants, anti-aging, and anti-inflammatory benefits. And you can make good income with it. Learn more at TonyDierso.com slash RainInfo. That's Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash R-A-I-N-I-N-F-O. Dr. Randall George Nozawa helps people make the most out of bad situations. He's the founder of the highly successful and acclaimed transformational Kaizen Institute for Personal Freedom. Left blind but not dead by two violent acts, he transformed his adversity into opportunity and dedicates his life to helping others successfully deal with their issues and misfortunes. Dr. Randall tells us how to transform adversity into opportunity next on Revenue Chat. Hi everyone, this is Tony D'Urso with Revenue Chat. With us we have Dr. Randall George Nozawa who says, You have to believe it before you can see it. Dr. Randall was blinded through two violent acts which left him broke and nearly homeless. He went on to form the highly successful, transformational Kaizen Institute for Personal Freedom. Regardless of your personal or financial situation, He can be an inspiring and steadying influence to navigate you through obstacles. Kaizen is a Japanese word meaning the practice of continuous improvement in life as well as business and is recognized as a long-term competitive strategy to success. Kaizen comes from two words, change and good. His website is drrandallgeorge.com. That's D-R... R-A-N-D-A-L-L, George.com, Dr. Randall, George.com. All right, Revenue Crew, let's rev it up. Get ready for Dr. Randall to tell us how to transform adversity into opportunity. Here we go. Hello, Dr. Randall. How are you? Hey, absolutely incredible. And uh, today has finally come. And boy, you you know how how long it's taken to get on your show. You're so damn popular. And I'm finally here. So, man, (laughs) I'm ready to go. Well, thank you. You know, I was impressed that when I started Revenue Chat, I filled up six months schedule and had a waiting list. It just seems a lot of people like being on my show. And I'm touched that it's something that people like. So, Thank you so much. The flip side also is true. I am very grateful to have you on this show, Dr. Randall, and I really want to thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us on Revenue Chat today. Oh, no, no that's, and you know, like I said, I, I just appreciate, uh, uh, you know, one, your kindness and the attention, and like I said, you know, I've, I've uh, uh, since meeting you, and, and of course, you know, I, I do my due diligence homework, and I've looked you up and all that, and boy, uh, you know, you're out there, and you're, uh, you're a celebrity maker, and that, that, that makes you one, actually, so this is dying to get on your show, and it's taking a while, and you're so popular, so this one's so excited to be here, so yeah, you know, I, I can't wait. Well, awesome, well, thank you again, and you know, in the intro, I mentioned a little bit about you, and perhaps you'd like to fill us in a little more on your roots and how you became an expert in your field. Dr. Randall, how did it all start for you? You know, I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. You know, I was actually a product of, like, in, I guess this is really common in Asian families, but in, in the family adoption. So my birth parents, you know, I was the youngest child. They couldn't afford me. So they gave me to my aunt and uncle, uh, who I called mom and dad. You know, that's how kind of life was. And I was told of this early on, and, you know, it didn't bother me. It's kind of how life went. Yeah, growing up in, in Hawaii as an only child, what I found out was... uh you know, I, I like learning things, and I was, uh, and I like solitude, you know, the only child, and things. And I was very good at, at uh, athletics, and that, that's the one thing that, that I did really well. 
that led to Pop Warner football, which I did very well, and then that, that got me uh, an athletic scholarship to Ilani High School, and that's the most prestigious academic high school in the Hawaii State. But I went there on an athletic scholarship, although I, I you know, I think I'm... I mean, you know, pretty bright and things like that. I was in school with all these darn kids, you know, the rich kids who were so, so smart and <laughs> pretty intimidating that way. But I went there to play sports. That's driven my life. And there I played football, ran track and played soccer. But it was the Elani football that was, you know, most influential in my life because they taught this uh, one team concept which was that, uh, which we were told, although we're not, you know, the biggest, fastest, and most talented, uh, we're going to win anyway. And you guys will run and be in so tip-top condition <laughs> that uh, winning won't be a problem. And so, you know, we, we were taught this one-team concept where you do your job and you make sure you never let your teammates stop down. And, you know, I've turned that into a business concept that's worked out quite well. Went to University of Oregon, played your football there for the Ducks. I um, got into uh, bodybuilding. I, you know, just very competitive. And I found out, you know, that you know, everybody else is taking steroids. So I really couldn't beat them. But, you know, I still work out today and uh, I was a personal trainer, nutritional consultant, injury rehab specialist for many years. I decided I wanted to become a doctor. I was leaning toward medical school. Of course, my family dentist goes, well, don't do that. There's death and dying. Do dentistry. I said, oh, okay. So I went uh, to, uh, I accepted the University of Washington Dental School. Really tough school, by the way, and top three dental schools in the country, and I was lucky enough to go there. And like I said, I, you know, I thought I was pretty darn smart until I met the rest of my classmates, and that sure knocked me down many rungs. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and from there, you know, went into private practice and all, and did very, very well there. And at one time, I uh, was in the top 1% of dental wage earners in the country. And, you know, what I found out about that, Tony, is that the, uh, I was good at what I was doing, but I didn't love it. And that kind of bugged me. I did not love it. I, I didn't think far enough ahead because it was more of a prestige money thing. Of course, I wanted that doctor title. I was making all this kind of money and I wasn't happy. Yeah. <laughs> and from there, that, that kind of brought me more to current and you know, to those uh, two unexpected events that happened that led to my blindness. And then from there, uh, life took me further and I just kind of remained who I was. And now I, <laughs> I get to be on your show. So I'm pretty darn happy. Well, thanks for sharing all that, Dr. Randall. I would like to know what happens when a rich, sighted doctor in an instant becomes blind and totally broke? Oh, sobering. (laughs) Because uh, it's like anything else. Uh, You know, all the bad things happen to other people. But in these two occurrences, it happened to me. Because, you know, all the late night stuff, all the bad stuff you see on, on TV, you know, you're going, ooh, ah, you know, that's too bad for those kind of folks and, and all that. I'm sure glad that wasn't me. Well, this time it was. Yeah, I, 2003, I was driving home from the office. I went off the road and I yeah, crashed my car. Tree branch broke through the windshield. That stuck in my brain, knocked out my left eye, permanently damaged the, the right eye. And that took me about a year almost a year to learn how to walk and talk again, but, you know, so much for the dental career, and that was all gone, and all the homes, cars, the money is gone. <laughs> all the stuff that I worked so hard for. Yeah, and then, you know, my, my beautiful, strong, loving wife, she goes, oh, you know, whatever it takes, it's okay. It's okay, you heal, and then, you know, get back on your feet. We limped by, I went back eventually after that year to uh, do personal training and, and uh, life coaching and success coaching and stuff like that, like I used to do before. Then, of all things, I, I met an elderly couple, a naturopathic doctor and his wife, and they wanted to do the nutrition business. I was like, oh, that's up, that's up my alley in my wheelhouse. It's great. That's what I studied. And so uh, we became friends, and we did this nutrition business. And uh, I thought, you know, this is a way to regain some income and help my family again. And, of course, I'm just written with guilt and shame that I've let down my family. Things were going well, and... This one evening, this guy melted down. I didn't know he had a, you know, a felonious past. And uh, I observed him shoot and kill his wife. And as I was leaning over to check her vitals, he shot me in the head. And that blew out my other eye. And, oh, my um, goodness. Yeah, yeah. I just, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I'm laying there on the ground. I'm going, now I can't see. And this guy's still walking around. And, well, you know, in a few minutes later, I heard another gunshot. So I, I, I think he uh, shot himself and then killed himself. So I'm there in their kitchen, on their kitchen floor. And there's two, these, two dead bodies and there's me. I'm going, you know, wow. 
And I'll tell you, the Gibby shot in the head, that doesn't hurt. It feels like someone thumps you really firmly, you know, with their uh, heel of their hand and all that. But it's, uh, yeah, I could feel blood and bone chips in my mouth. You know, my brain was still working. I couldn't open my jaw because my, my uh, TMJ ligament what was damaged. And then what I learned later is that that bullet had a 357 Magnum slug. So actually, I beat a bullet. I can actually say that. And because I lived, you know, broke him to shrapnel. And it almost uh, severed my tongue. So I had to get that sewn back. And when I was telling you previously, I, you know, I started lisping. And I've got, you know, these numb lips and things. So I, I uh, practice uh, speech sounds every day, just jaw movements and just do get some sense of normalcy and all that. But yeah, lost everything I owned and, you know, presented with another challenge. And kind of like many people in life and, you know, you included, I had to make a decision. What do you want? And and I didn't want to just shrivel up and and die and all that. Other than having no eyeballs, I was pretty darn healthy. And I wanted to do something with my life. So, uh, yeah, you know, broken all, I, I put myself, I went to blind school. You have to learn all the blind skills. You know, with the cane and uh, catching buses and kitchen safety and learning how to use a computer with this talking program. And uh, I put myself through thereafter two different type of graduate schools for counseling psychology and addictions counseling. And what I found is that I wanted to be more than just a counselor. This time around, I, I wanted to be a, a life changer. So I studied and put together some material. I, I wrote 77 digital books that I call Wisdom Scrolls. Um, all varying topics, uh, overcoming addiction, overcoming PTSD, uh, dating, having a better marriage, you know, how to overcome your limiting beliefs and, you know, how, how to make dreams uh, into reality, uh, things like that. And uh, I base my business on that and all the God laws. And, uh, you know, the most famous one is law of attraction that everybody knows. Yeah. So, you know, that brings me current and said, I, I love what I'm doing now. I guess I could call myself a professional and personal development advisor. And I'm also a global keynote speaker now, published author. I guess, you know, wealth transformation coach and business strategist. I help people make more money. I help them, you know, awaken their deepest passions. I help them to just accentuate their, their greatest talents. You know, have them say yes to their dreams instead of uh, shackled to, you know, our societal type of uh, mediocrity thinking that, you know, that there's work and then just paying taxes, and then you die. And I, I wanted to, you know, have people live their dreams. Yeah, and I, I'm, I couldn't be happier. Like I said, I, I've arrived. So I get to be on your show, so I'm doing pretty good. Wow, what an incredible story, Dr. Randall. I hold you in such high regard for what you've been through, dealt with, and turned around and made this adversity into something where you help others to be so successful and do so well. It is quite amazing. It's probably unheard of or unparalleled, at least in any stories I've ever heard. It's just absolutely amazing. I hold you in such high regard for that. That's great. Wow. No, 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 thank you. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's, we we talked about a little of this before. It said, you know, I should have died twice, but I didn't. And other than losing eyeballs and some facial numbness and having practice my speech sounds and all that, uh, you, you know, I was, I was spared. It, it, was, it was like God didn't want me to die yet. And I talked to God every day because uh, uh, other than that, I, I'm so darn healthy. And I, uh, like I have done for these past years, you know, I work out every day, you know, I eat well. But see, what's better now is that I get to live my dreams. And I dream, dream, dream more and more, and I'm, I'm making bigger. And things, you know, by following the God laws is that... Uh, my life is just much better, and I'm, I'm a lot happier. I didn't feel that uh, longing and discontent as a, a high-income dentist. I love what I'm doing now, and my income is slowly going up. And whatever I made as a dentist way back when, I want to do a, th- a thousand times that. And I, I want to be the agent of change to 3.5 billion people and more uh, you know, before I die. Because you know, I find that, one, well, that's my skill, and I'm very good at it. I know how to take a bad situation and turn that into an open door. You know, that really makes me come alive. That makes me happy. God did not want me to die yet. As I talk to God daily, you know, that brings me here. So I've organized my thoughts and all the things that I need to do to build a successful business. And uh, because of the Internet and, of course, (laughs) the the talking program that I use now, I I get to mentor people all over the world and most recently in seven countries. And uh, we get over the language thing and and things like that. And I I get to, you know, listen to them with, with that audio program, hockey program that I have, and 
rewarding, rewarding. And there are so many people around the world who tell me that they, you know, money is a big thing that, uh, you know, they want to make. But it's just that my thing to them is that money is a great tool and all, but uh, if you develop your, your dream or that thing inside of you that, that pulls you to that stuff you love and make and monetize it that way, that's when you're going to be the happiest and most fulfilled. So we kind of go that way. The internet is, I think, uh, and you know, it's any kind of technology is a spiritual gift because it comes from ideas, from the creative imagination. And that's where you talk to God. Thank goodness we've had people like an Abraham Lincoln or a, a Buddha, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Mohandas Gandhi, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison. Thanks to them and their creative ideas, uh, there are billions of cars around the world. Henry Ford could barely read, but he stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it, used the law of attraction and attracted to him uh, people like William Burroughs, Harvey Firestone, and then from there, Thomas Edison. And now there is something called the horseless carriage that uh, we all enjoy. And thanks to a guy like uh, Thomas Edison, three months of former school and only, right, we can watch something called the TV. We can go to the movies. Uh, we can listen to a radio. And we can go anywhere in the world and flick on the switch and the lights come on. All from this guy who had three months of schooling. I see all of that, and I see such unlimited potential in everyone, and just uh, our human potential is so untapped. We can do so much as human beings, uh, much more so than we are now, you know, that that's what I want to do. I guess, you know, long lengthy uh, response to your question here is, uh, you know, my lifelong mission is to educate, inspire, and empower individuals to live in their greatest lives, rich in love, uh, joy, peace, harmony, abundance, gratitude, inclusion, and contribution, because it's... Having almost died twice, you know, I took life for granted, didn't appreciate it. You know, now I do. When I see folks out there, you know, my family included, is that eventually we're going to die. We're not going to live till 200. Spiritually, we might, but physically, we won't. And to live your highest expression that you can. And, uh, you know, don't settle for average, uh, ordinary, mediocre, because you're not. You have all these gifts. I would like people to express that, and but that's basically what my business is. That's excellent, Dr. Randall. Thanks for sharing all that. Very interesting. Could you please tell us about the company that you started, the Transformational Kaizen Institute for Personal Freedom, and maybe get into your signature program as well? Yeah, yeah. The, thanks for bringing that up. The Transformational Kaizen Institute for Personal Freedom was meant to develop or reignite hope you know, in people and get people to start dreaming again and dreaming uh, bigger. And, you know, just expanding on dreams. And the third part is to help everyone recognize all their limiting beliefs that we've all picked up since birth. And you can see that expressed in your life and, the, and how you speak, uh, meaning you make excuses for everything when things don't work out or you say stuff like, I can't, I won't, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough. But that's only for rich people. You know, if he got lucky or if he had rich parents, I didn't go to college. And you find every excuse to not get your true desires, and then you, you live a small life, and you live, uh, when things go on, you condition yourself to live a frustrating life because you want more, you can see that, what, what you want, except uh, you, you won't go for it because you're held down by those limiting beliefs, which I help you get over. And so that's what that Transformational Kaizen kind of Institute is all about. My signature program, you know, I've named Transforming Adversity into Opportunity, and actually that was something that I, I created for me. If you can imagine, uh, you know, I, w I went from pretty wealthy to absolute rock bottom, penury, poverty. I was almost homeless. Now I can't see. <laughs> and uh, I'm filled, ridden with guilt and shame that I let my family down. I couldn't ba bounce back fast enough. And uh, I had to, I had to find something. I, I needed a program, so I developed my own program, used the years of personal mastery study to put together uh, a nine-step blueprint that I still follow, that, that I teach. And the basis of that is to transform the adversity into some kind of opportunity or find the open door that's uh, disguised as misfortune. And uh, that, that's done wonders for me and a lot of great things for other people. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things that when we, we had this gift of life that we never quite appreciate, but during life, there's good stuff and bad stuff, and uh, there's a combination of all those things. You know, that's called life. It's just except that if you concentrate on the bad, you get more of it, and, and that's the law of attraction. And you concentrate on good, you get, the, you get all of that too. But bad does, does happen. The trick is to turn the bad, turn the obstacle 
into something good. And when that happens, when you learn and grow, but the other is you're still advancing, you're still progressing. That's how you know that the life is okay and worthwhile. And what's going to happen eventually, you know, we all want more money and, and things like that. You know, which is, you know, money is a great tool, but it's, it's, uh, it's only that a tool, but it also provides time freedom. And, but you're going to evolve to that point where you're just not going to be just thinking about yourself. You're going to be thinking about other people. You're going to think about your fellow being and how can you as an individual improve other people's lives? You know, that, that, that's where all the juice comes from. You know, we're nearing 8 billion people on earth now. If you concentrate on the news, there's death, dying, war, violence, you know, rape, theft, and just hatred, jealousy, envy, every possible negative vibrating emotion out there. And what happens with that is that you get more of it because that kind of stuff's attractive, like, like the good, positive, loving thoughts are. So I'd like to change all that. Just a quick note here to thank you all for sharing Revenue Chat episodes. And I also thank you for going to iTunes and leaving a rating and review. It means a lot to hear that you like my shows. If you haven't yet, I thank you in advance for going to iTunes and telling me how you like it. I had a custom-built home on a golf course valued in the seven digits. Yeah, that was nice. But believe it or not, the electric bill was nearly always over $1,000 a month. That was nuts. I wish I had solar power because today, rooftop solar benefits everyone. More solar means less need for power plants or power lines that you have to pay for. Energy gets cleaner, cheaper, and better for everyone. The future is now. Everyone is waking up to this, so you need to jump in now and benefit. The power is yours. Why not get in on the biggest thing in energy and earn additional income as well? The power is yours. Join us and hack your job with additional income at the same time. Create financial freedom for decades to come. Learn more at TonyDierso.com slash P-O-W-U-R. That's Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash P-O-W-U-R. Hey there, you got to check out this great income maker, Rain Soul, S-O-U-L. It's a delicious seed-based two-ounce blend packed with antioxidants, anti-aging, and anti-inflammatory benefits. Studies show Rain Soul reduces inflammation by 33%. It increases the stimulation of cell life for anti-aging properties by 62%. And Brunswick Lab tests reveal free radical reduction by more than 2.5 times. Check this out. My wife had an accident with our dog that left her wrist and shoulder aching for years and her feet used to hurt all the time as a result of a lot of walking on the job. Well, after three doses of rain soul in two days, her wrist and shoulder pains disappeared and her feet stopped hurting. And get this, the income model is outrageous. Please find out more at TonyDierso.com slash rain info. That's Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash R-A-I-N-I-N-F-O. And we're here with Dr. Randall George Nozawa talking about transforming adversity into opportunity. His website is drrandallgeorge.com. And like I said, you know, God left me alive for a reason. I should be dead, like seriously brain damaged. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful. And all I had to do was sacrifice my eyes and I get to now live the life of my dream. So, you know, I'm pretty darn lucky, pretty darn happy. Well, thank you, Dr. Randall. It's astounding. I just, I'm so impressed at what you've done that sometimes you leave this Italian over here on the other side of the phone, you leave him speechless. <laughs> that's amazing. Man, that's hard to do with you. Oh my God. Yeah, because okay. I'll, I'll well talk then. forever. <laughs> it's like tying my hands. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, that's thank, okay. Thank you, Dr. N. Well, let me ask you, let me, if I may, for the Revenue Chat stars, that's what I call the Revenue Chat audience. They're my stars. They're awesome, awesome people. We love our audience. What simple advice can you offer to anyone experiencing the unexpected worst? Like, uh, they don't expect it, but what would they do when something suddenly comes along, not planned for, and it throws everything out of whack? You know, that's a great great thing because, you know, every once in a while that happens to us. Sometimes we don't know how to deal with it. But when the worst happens, be grateful for it. Kind of not intuitive, right? Being grateful for it, meaning is that when you survived it and you learned something, you're better, stronger because of that. Because you can turn, because this is an outcome. It's a situation. 
And then uh, that situation with your power of decision making, you can make that the worst that it is or make it even, you know, just, you know, far worse than it already is. Or you can find the goodness in it. You can be grateful for it. And you can find the open door, the gem that, that's hidden in there. Because, you know, how our mind works is that if you concentrate on the worst, the bad, the terrible and all that, you get more of it. You're going to fill your brain for it, full of that and your life will reflect it. Because you survive, right? you've got a chance to create a life, and perhaps one better than that what you already had, and you know, I did that. When you find that the worst happens, be grateful for it, and find the opportunity, uh, you know, and it, it will be disguised as misfortune, but find the opportunity, because whatever that is, if it's uh, you know, some kind of physical thing with uh, blindness, uh, missing a limb, uh, you know, cancer, just, you know, severe burn and all that kind of things like that. If your brain still works, then you have a chance to still express, express yourself because we're two things. We're flesh and bone on the outside, but uh, we're filled with spirit. And God is not only all around you, but inside of you. So you have that kind of wisdom and strength. And to waste that, that would be a sin because, you know, we've got this time around. We have the here and now. And like I said, I don't know what happens after death. People that die, they're dead. So that's what I know. But you have to hear it now. And no matter what you've gone through, you can somehow find the good in it. You know, that could lead to writing a book to be more caring and loving, to be supportive, to be more empathic to other people, to, uh, you know, to find a way how to uh, make, make a living, how to make money out of that, out of that thing, how to teach people how to be, to be resilient. That, you know, crap happens in life, and that's called life. But I guess, you know, in my, in my wordy kind of circumlocutionary rant here is that uh, you take that worst situation and be grateful for it and find the open door. Well, thank you, Dr. Randall. I got it. All right. And I think you may have mentioned this earlier very rapidly, but let's delineate them. I believe you have some rules for success. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for asking. asking. I've got three of them. The first one is called that, that I uh, have this thing that, that I call leg. It's uh, love, empathy, and gratitude. Love meaning love yourself because when you're worth it, it's hard to love other things or other people when you don't love yourself. And you're not going to get what you want in life unless you have a lot of self-love and self-worthiness. And from there, you know, love everything. Next part of this first part uh, is empathy. See and feel what the other person sees and feels. Because uh, when life is totally about you, uh, you're very closed off. We're, we're all connected spiritually. And when you can see and feel what the other person sees and feels, uh, now you're in touch because uh, uh, there isn't really no right, uh, good, bad, right or wrong. It's what, what you label it. And when you can see into other people and, and not judge them, but perceive more and see what they see, feel what they feel, uh, you, you become attached become closer, and now, now you become understanding because, you know, we all have our, uh, our, our human traits, and, uh, you know, we can be called weird names for all those kind of things, but deep inside, there's this invisible world of causes that causes, you know, uh, what we do in the external world, you know, our behavior, so please be empathic, and then the, the third part to this first part is gratitude, be grateful. When you're grateful, that wipes out frustration, that wipes out selfishness, that wipes out the greed, that wipes out anger and jealousy, envy, and all those negative emotions. Because as we speak now, you and I and everyone else listening and everyone else that's still living here, we get to experience a never-before-lived day. And we are so lucky because of that. A never-before-lived day. And this is, wow, we can make this day the way we want. And so... Uh, you know, that's number one, is leg. Number two is just giving. It's the, uh, I would say, the secret sauce to successful living is giving. And what my parents taught me, the more you give without expecting anything back, you get a lot back. You just give, give, give. And when it feels good, you help out other folks. You extend the caring compassion by giving because the alternative to that is taking. And you know what happens with that happens when you take, 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 take all of a sudden the giver is going to get tired and stop giving and the taker will be very lonely. And, and that's when all the bad things happen uh, with the loneliness, frustration, anger, and increased selfishness. So well, my second rule is to always be a giver. And number three, kind of like what we've talked about before and what the name to this segment is, is that you you transform adversity into opportunity. You find 
that open door that's disguised as misfortune. And when you do that, you are mastering life, you're mastering your situation, you're in control of what you do, and you've created your destiny by design. You can't ask for much more than that. And, uh, you know, with all this, what happens is that as you grow as a person, you know, just intellectually, spiritually, you know, and such, that's what God actually wants. Because like Neil Donald Wall says, you know, in, in his uh, conversations with God, what, what God wants is to be the, the uh, uh, you know, better version of ourselves. And that's what the Kaizen Code is. And, you know, once you have that as a beautiful state of mind, uh, you know, you, you really are unstoppable. And then you can live that life that uh, you would most love living. And that, that's what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate. And th- those are my rules. Those are great rules, Dr. Randall. And, you know, I feel I'm but a novice in some of those. I am such a, an adherent to the practice of giving without asking in return and being grateful. But the more I do, the more I feel there is so much more to learn. And the more I feel I've just not even scratched the surface in terms of what that really is. In fact, in other words, the more I do it, the less I think I'm doing it, and the more the growth there is as a result of that. It's really quite something. And yet, yeah, it is probably not quite a rocket ride, but you find yourself ascending into a new beingness, for lack of a better wording. Maybe that is the right word. You just find yourself ascending into being a better person. But then the road ahead of you, to me, keeps getting longer, and there's so much more to go. You bring up a valid point here because it's um, one thing. I, I hearken back to the God law, and there is a God law of giving, receiving, and circulation. What you're re- referring to is giving, 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 and yes, you're expanding and living a higher expression and growing and all that. But you will, someone like you and many people, and I'm one of them too, is that we all forget about the receiving part. We want to give so much that we negate the receiving, and thusly you cut off the circulation. We have to learn how to be good receivers. So it's, uh, you know, giving is one thing. It's that, that when people want to give to you, we should do that graciously and not say, oh, no, no, that's, no, please don't do that. It's that you accept it, you know, with gratitude, because we have to keep that circulation going. Because, uh, you know, we are human beings, and, you know, giving is one thing, and eventually what's happened is that once you keep on giving, 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 there are going to be times that you get all gived out. You don't do it anymore. And that's an awful feeling. So we have to learn how to be good, good receivers and to be grateful and thankful that, that, you know, other people are thinking about us because it's what you described is that giving is, uh, stimulates things in people where you're giving to them often gives them pause to say, hmm, I wonder how that's like. And you know, I've never uh, been one to give something before. I just like taking stuff and all that. And, and then like people that go to parties, you know, they, they go over and then they'll drink your booze and they'll eat food and they'll leave. They never bring anything. And they often wonder why no one invites them anymore. <laughs> so, what? yeah, yeah you, know, it, you know, kind of dumb, right? But that's true. And then uh, my daughter's friends, a lot of them are like that, and they finally figured it out. And so what, what you're saying is that uh, you are a giver and all that, but I think you need to become a better receiver. And see, that part is hard because uh, that doesn't feel good initially. The, when uh, you think of this as a God law, giving goes with receiving. Giving stimulates receiving. So the more you give, the more it's going to come back to you. And so be grateful for that and allow the circulation cycle to continue. Thank you for explaining that a little more, Dr. Randall. I am going to think about that, and I hope that this gives some insight into our Revenue Star audience, and they think more about this and practice it. All right. Well, at this point in our interview, I'd like to talk about purpose. Dr. Randall, what's your vision? What drives you to keep on, please? You know, I kind of mentioned it previously. You know, Tony, I should have died twice, and I didn't. wonder about that, and I talked to God about that, and I said, wow, you know, you know, God, being blind is not too much fun. You know, what is all this? And uh, I don't know if I'm talking to myself or having God talk through me. You know, I just harken back to my uh, my mission, and, and that's to serve God by educating, inspiring, empowering individuals to living their greatest lives in highest expression. That's what I'm dedicated to. Because, you know, I, I guess you could call it a calling, because it's, uh, you know, I, I've gone through life and made it this far, but, uh, you know, I finally... It to be that doctor somebody got it. You know, people said, oh, you're not smart enough to do that. So, you know, I proved them wrong, and I got to make a lot of money. That didn't make me happy. I just think that God did not want me to die yet. 
I think God wanted me to think about my life purpose, my soul's intention, the message that I wanted to send, all of this in the context of, yes, eventually I'm going to die. It was not through that car wreck, and it was not through that gunshot. You know, I, I beat a bullet. Many people can't say that. And I'm here. My brain still works, and I have had to learn all these blind skills and things, but I'm constantly improving, too, as a blind person. There's, you know, things with my personal life purpose of how that, you know, what I find is lifting up not only myself, but other people. Because in our limited time here, in my limited time here, is that uh, I want to get a lot done. Uh, you know, and it creates significant change in our world because all you have to do is read the headlines. Uh, war, violence, you know, all their religions clashing and hating, uh, poverty, continual misogyny and people uh, dissing on women and things like that, and people that don't like poor people and just uh, complaining about bad situations and all and doing nothing about it. But there's so many places to improve, and, you know, I want to be a part of that, and that is a major part of my life purpose, but it, it is to serve God. And uh, and how I can do that is what, what I've learned, not only academically, but experientially, is to educate, inspire, and empower people to live in their greatest lives uh, at their fullest expression. Ah, well said. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Dr. Randall. Thank you. That's very good. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, we're close to wrapping up. Is there anything else that you would like our audience to know about, please? Yeah, real, real quickly is that, uh, you know, Tony, I, uh, I, I've made it this far, you know, I, I, it's, it was a good time to kind of reflect, uh, you know, what I call uh, metacognition, meta-awareness, which is thinking about what you're thinking about and kind of looking back at what influenced me. I, I've had a lot of heroes, and starting with my parents, my mom, uh, my adopted mom, Margaret, uh, schizophrenic and uh, with uh, long-lasting bouts of depression, but, you know, with such a giving heart, even with the sort of emotional type of deficits that she had, uh, you know, she and my dad uh, taught me giving and giving and giving, giving, giving. And, and uh, even when you had little to give, you still give. And then, then, uh, then uh, I had my, my football coaches, uh, Edward Hamada, Earl Hidani, the company, the one team concept. That's why I learned grit. If there's one thing, and Napoleon Hill calls that persistence, but I call it grit is that uh, when you're not physically capable compared to your opponent and all that, is that you still give it a go and you expect to come out on top. And then you get knocked down, you get up. You get knocked down, you get up. You know, from there, the coaches I had in college and all the personal improvement people that I've studied, you know, from uh, Napoleon Hill, Andrew Carnegie, uh, Earl Nightingale, uh, Bob Proctor, Mary Morrissey, Lisa Sasevich, uh, you know, Ted McGrath, Jennifer McLean, Christy Whitman, and, you know, most recently, it's uh, my friend, teacher, mentor, Dr. Stephen T. Busby. He's uh, retiring from the Eastern Washington School District, and his claim to fame was uh, he devoted most of his educational career to teaching and taking in the kids that other teachers kick out of school, you know, for discipline problems or for violence or, you know, drugs, prostitution or whatever negative behavior that is. And his was a uh, tough love kind of thing where he wanted the best for these kids, but they had to learn that, you know, all actions have a consequence. And so when the actions are bad, you get bad consequences. And to take personal responsibility for that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I just so admire that kind of guy. And he's the one that's helped me most on my way, you know, from the uh, shooting especially, you know, to help me develop my, my digital books, to help me develop my signature program, to, you know, help me with my website. And he and I are, are he's a very good business marketing mind, and he and I are going to be, be teaming up in the future and, and, and really expanding the transformational kinds of institute for personal freedom because, you know, he wants that too, and he sees so much improvement that needs to be made in our educational system and uh, with, with all the, uh, you know, kids that aren't uh, working and with the kids that aren't following their dreams. And so uh, we're going to be working that way. But, uh, yeah, Dr. Stephen D. Busby is, uh, you know, just a close friend and someone that I trust, and someone that uh, is, uh, I would just call him the master mentor because he's mentoring me <laughs> and a lot of other people. And the other one that uh, this lady will be on your show here eventually is uh, uh, Deborah Rue through Global and Tech Access, and she does this uh, very, very popular uh, podcast called uh, Human Potential at Work. But uh, she's 
one that uh, advocates for the disabled and has taught, lectured, and uh, introduced the idea of, you know, hiring more of the disabled uh, to companies, especially internationally. And she's uh, spoken on this subject to seven different governments, and ones I remember are Egypt and Greece. But, you know, she's one that is uh, an international mover, uh, also one of my uh, business mentors and especially my spiritual mentor, that, uh, you know, she uh, wants to make this difference in the world. And by, you know, showing that, uh, you know, people like me, that's not that I'm in this category of the differently able or handicapable, <laughs> that, uh, you know, we still have value. And then we see the world differently because of the disability. And uh, thus, we we're an asset to any kind of company. But she's focusing now on human potential, which is so awesome because it's unlimited and it's unknown. And we don't know how much what we have inside of us. And when we explore that, you know, that's where your, your darn growth comes from, because we have all these God gifts, but we never use them. And so this is what she's doing. So, you know, I just, just honor her as a, a very good teacher, a very good mentor, friend, in my spiritual teacher, and like I said, I can't wait for her to get on your show, but yeah, uh, my, my, my wordy closing. So yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I really uh, learn a lot from my heroes, and then uh, I, I look at biographies, I, I learn a, about other people and, and how they chose to live their lives, and boy, there's a lot to learn, and uh, you can model success or not. We all can choose, but uh, you know, we were meant to be better than we are. Uh, the message that I want to leave with everyone is that You've gotten to this point uh, for a reason because of your belief system. And when you look at your outcomes, if you're not happy with them, you can change them. And then, but that all comes from uh, one uh, changing your thought patterns and believing in yourself. Because we have so much unlimited power that we never use. And uh, I would like all of us to experience that, unleash it, and make a big, big difference in the world. Thank you for sharing that about your heroes, Dr. Randall. Very cool. And I do look forward to having her on my show as soon as possible. Did you have a gift for our audience that you wanted to share? Yeah, yeah. so thanks for bringing that up. You know, I've written 77 digital books, Wisdom Scrolls, and one that I wanted to, uh, you know, give to you and all of your audience is what I called, uh, I named the Wisdom Bible. And these are all on uh, success uh, principles, the success philosophy, and I guess you you call that the Randall George religion. But that's what I wanted to give to you and to your audience because, uh, you know, this is what I compiled and, you know, I've taken these past four years to write it, is to have all these neat uh, success strategies that people can use, you know, everyday events and from there the thought processes that go to them. And, you know, sometimes we choose the lack and lesser and scarcity and that's what we get. So uh, my wisdom Bible, you know, my gift to you is that something that they can use as a reference to uh, give them another perspective and to elevate them from, you know, the, the lack and lesser to what is possible, what could be. So anyway, that, that, that's uh, my gift uh, to, to you and, to you, and uh, you know, this wonderful audience. Well, thank you, Dr. Randall. How do we do that? Do we go to drrandallgeorge.com? You know, uh, I, I was going to ask you about that. I could either send that to you which you could, you know, in, in digital format, and that's what you could uh, send to all of your, your subscribers, or, yeah, yes, it, it would be on, on the website. So I'm, whatever I'm look- you think might be most efficacious. Sure. I'm looking at your website. I see your free book here, Precipice of Potential. I don't think it's up there yet, but it will be, I think, in a couple of weeks, because, uh, once again, you know, my, my friend, Dr. Stephen T. Busby, is the, the poor guy in charge of <laughs> all, all the editing and making of the book covers and all that, so I, that, that poor guy, you know, he works a full day, and I just slam him with all this, I need this, I need this. <laughs> all right, so everyone, so you can get this, what's it called again, the it's Wisdom it's Bible? It's called the Wisdom Bible, yes. All right, and we can get that going to... Dr. Randall, R-A-N-D-A-L-L, George.com, and we'll see it right there, the Wisdom Bible, for everyone to obtain. Is that yes. right? No, that's right, Dr. Randall, George.com, yes, and all, all, all free to uh, you know, all your, your, your viewers and your audience. Fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much, Dr. Randall. What a superior interview. It's such an honor to have you on the show. It was great. Oh, no, no. Thank you for having me. I like to be, uh, you, you know, just with the uh, not dying and just talking to God a lot and then just adhering more to the God laws. You know, Tony, I've never been happier. I've got this great family. My dreams are bigger 
and more expansive than they were before. And, you know, like I told you previously, I want to be that agent of change to 3.5 billion people and more, but I also want to earn more than a billion dollars. I want to prove that it's possible. And I said, you know, I've earned a lot of money before in the past, but I, in the past, but I want to, you know, do that thousand, 10,000 times that to show it's possible because it's, uh, once you put your heart and your mind to it and it's a high vibrational match, it will come true. Just with evidence with that, I could meet someone like you. Uh, you know, because, and, and, you know, you're, you're on those lists, that list of heroes too, because, you know, you've got this cool show that I want to show like this. And I, you know, maybe if I copy you, then I can get one. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, my thing is you model success and, you know, there's no one more successful than you than, you know, you got your own show and I don't. So, uh, you, you see, it, uh, it all plays out and it all matches up. And when the high vibrational energy is really high, it's attractive. And then, uh, like I say, it could be uh, both negative and positive. And then, you know, you can also attract negative, but I prefer positive. You know, I get to meet someone like you. You know, I'm, I'm just so grateful and lucky that, uh, you know, I met you on LinkedIn, which I think everyone should get on LinkedIn to know. How the universe works is that you responded. And, uh, you know, I'm so damn grateful you know, that you did. And, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, thankful, thankful, thankful. And uh, I, I got to spend some time on your show that, you know, I finally get on it because you so aren't busy and I'm, I'm lucky and I get to spread my message. And uh, like I said, I, uh, I need to get in front of those 3.5 billion people and more before I die. And this was such a great start to that. And I, I'm so grateful. And thank you so much. Well, very cool. Again, Dr. Randall, thank you again so much. It really is my honor. And to the revenue star audience, his website is drrandallgeorge.com and you get your copy of the Wisdom Bible. Well, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, and stay tuned to our next show on Revenue Chat. Listen to my other awesome interviews at Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash radio. And please drop me a message. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Thanks again, everyone. And until next time, remember, you can make life better for yourself and everyone. Choose wisely. Choose wisely.